Hi, friend. I'm John Carter. Easter time, and I want you to know we've got nothing to be fearful about because Christ is alive. We don't serve a dead Christ. As some of you folks know, I've been to Russia many times. In fact, I've been to Russia a total of 50 times. And many, many years ago, they had this tremendous revolution in Russia. It was in the year 1917. And so they decided they were going to get rid of God and kick God off his throne and they were going to turn Russia into a great communist state. And they succeeded, except they didn't kick God off his throne. In 1917, the communist leaders from Moscow sent out all of these officials to go around Russia and to harangue the Russian people. One Russian official got up and spoke to the Russian people for two hours. That's not so long for a Russian. Russians are great talkers. So he talked for two hours, proving that there's no God, giving all the reasons, science and everything else, philosophy, why there's no God. And when he got through, he said to the little pastor who was standing down the front of this mass of people, he said, look, I've just spoken to the people here and I've proved to them there's no God. Now, I'm going to give you five minutes to answer everything I've said. The pastor said, sir, I don't need five minutes. I just need five seconds. So he got up and went and stood in front of this crowd of tens of thousands of Russians and he cried out the traditional Russian Easter greeting. The Lord is risen. And the Russian people thundered back, he is risen indeed. <laughs> the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. That finished off that old communist and all of his foolish arguments. Now, people can debate for a million years on all the reasons that they can concoct in their minds why there's no God. But there's one great truth they can't get past, and that is this, the Lord is risen. Jesus Christ is alive. I've been to Moscow so many times, and when I've been in Moscow, I, I go to Red Square, and I go to the tomb of Lenin. It's not like the tomb of Jesus, because the tomb of Jesus doesn't have a body in it. But when you go into the tomb of Lenin, my friend, there's this old waxy figure. It, they say it's Lenin. I think it is. It could be just a bunch of wax. I'm not too sure. But I think it's Lenin. There he is with his little goatee beard. And I say to people when I get out and I'm talking to people, you want to know why communism collapsed? Yeah, well, tell us why. They asked me this on Soviet television years ago interviewed me on Soviet television. They said, why has the Soviet kingdom, the Soviet state collapsed? I said, this very easy because it was built upon a dead man. But the Christian church was not built upon a dead man. The true church was built upon a living Christ. That's the difference, my friend. Communism, atheism, all of these things are bound to crumble and fall to pieces because they're built upon the theories of men. The Soviet Union collapsed because it was built upon Lenin, a corpse. But the Christian church will not collapse because it's built upon the living Christ. Now, I want to come around here where I can see my Bible a little bit better. And I want to read you, dear folks, a text. I'm going to come over here to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 in my old Bible. And I'm going to start at verse, I think, let me see, verse 3. Okay, ready for this? I want to read you these verses. For I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. Even Richard Dawkins says Jesus existed. 
Once upon a time, the world's most famous atheist said that Jesus was a figment of the imagination. More recently, I heard him say, no, I was wrong. There was a Jesus. He was buried, that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, that he was seen by Cephas or by Peter. After that, he was seen by over 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain to the present time. Some have fallen asleep. That means they've died. After that, he was seen by James, then by the apostles. Then last of all, he was seen by me also, as by one born out of due time. Listen to me. Christianity is based upon facts. Christianity isn't based upon bogus thinking. It's not based upon fantasy. No, it's based upon fact and reality. It is based upon the reality of the truth that Christ rose from the dead. For instance, he was seen by 500 people on one occasion. That would stand up in any reasonable court of law. We believe in witnesses. He was seen by Mary Magdalene. She she actually took hold of him. He said, don't Don't detain me now. He was seen by Peter. Uh, He was seen by the apostles. These men were not crooks and charlatans. No, no, no. Uh, These men were some of the best people who've ever lived. And they wrote down the eyewitness accounts and they wrote it down in this historical document. It's called the Bible. There's another thing that people don't seem to think about a great deal. I'm talking about atheists and cynics, and that is what happened to the body of Christ. Some say, oh, well, the Romans got the body of Christ. Why didn't they produce it then and do away with the Christian church? Others say, oh, no, uh, the, the Jewish people got the body. No, if the Jewish people got the body of Christ, they would have produced it Once and for all, there's one thing that will do away with the Christian church and the truth of Christ and the resurrection, and that is the dead body of Christ. But there's no dead body of Christ. You know why? The body was resurrected and Jesus is alive. I want you to know that today. The Lord Jesus Christ is alive. And we are not alone. He said, I will be with you always, even to the very end of the world. In the midst of the coronavirus pandemic, I will be with you. Even when you lose a loved one, I will be with you. And even when death comes for you and for me, he says, I will be with you. And then he said this, Because I live, you shall live also. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, even though he was dead, yet he is going to live. I assure you today, not on the basis of blind faith, but on the basis of concrete evidence, verifiable evidence, Jesus Christ is alive. And because he lives, we're going to live too. One day there's going to be a tremendous resurrection. All of God's people are are going to wake up. (laughs) It's going to be wonderful. And uh, God's people are going to wake up and uh, they're going to go home with Jesus to glory. That's why Jesus said, this is the great message of of Easter. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Ah, my friend, the future is bright. The future is bright 
with the promises of God and remember this great message. Never let it be taken out of your mind. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. And praise the Lord. And God bless you.